my God, I think we've started. I think we're here. I think we're rolling. <laughs> Let's not get too excited. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. That right over there is Pike Taylor Radio. Hi, Pike. How are you, sir? Hey, Sparks. It's good to see you again. Hey, it's really good to see you. It's <laughs> not like we've been sitting here trying to get this going for a good 15 minutes or so. No, this this show, not a chance. Not a chance in hell. Well, my God, what a weekend I had. Did you have a good weekend? It was. I had a wedding, which is hard to believe in these times. Who's having weddings yeah. right now? I know. It, it was. I mean, it was. They did what you could, right? It was outside, okay. limited people, unlimited alcohol, which oh, wow. I think was it was the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> if we're, if we're going to risk our health, there better be just unlimited alcohol. It was in a mansion too, on a lake. I guess the house used to be owned by Minnesota Vikings quarterback Dante Culpepper. Oh, wow. Yeah, of course. I remember Dante Culpepper. Sure. Oh, yeah. Dude, this house. Unreal. So that was nice. Getting up, hungover, and driving four hours back home. The worst day of my life. But, you know, it evened out. It evened out. How about you? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Before we get to my thing, are you going to get tested? Are you? How paranoid are you about the whole COVID thing? (sighs) Gosh, not. I got a scale. I I don't know. I feel like. I've had lunch with people who have tested positive. Like I've been in very close contact. Hold had on. To quarantine had to test, not knowingly. No, relax, <laughs> sit down. What? <laughs> no, I'm not like. What are you doing? I'm not, I'm not seeking out people to <laughs> have. Te- I'm saying like, people found out after we were together had to contact me and say, "Hey, I tested positive," and I've yet to test positive. So, I feel like it's hard to get right. Relatively, it's, it's no. Not- no, it's very easy to get, Pike. It's very easy. It's four times more <laughs> contagious than the flu. I'd never get the flu either. Oh, Listen, I'm taking it seriously, but I feel like I don't need to test unless I were to feel some symptoms, and I don't. No, that's not how it works. You, some people don't get symptoms. Oh, for God's sakes. God damn it. I feel like my dad is yelling at me. What? This is not everybody gets symptoms, dude. That's the whole point. You should get tested. You I should know. get tested. Okay. I'll get tested. He's frozen. He's frozen. You froze it. You froze up again. You froze up again. Mm. You said you're going to get tested? Wait, are we frozen? No, you're. <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. the show was frozen. <laughs> I was waiting. Who's frozen? No, you froze. I didn't hear what you said. You said you're going to get tested? Yeah, I'm going to get tested. Okay. okay. If that's what you want, like, oh, I'm, I'm just trying to make tested. everyone happy. I'm Look. trying to go to these weddings people want me at. I know. I'm trying to get tested I know. for my podcast co-host because he wants me to. Dude, Listen, look. I know. It's, it. Look, it's a, it's a tough time. It's a tough time. Yeah, it's a tough time. Like, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's weird. And, and. Like, I, because this weekend I was going to tell you, I had people over my house. This is the first time oh, in 2020 right. I had you people. Had, and you had everyone get tested before. Yes, dude. Yes. That's I got time. tested. My wife got tested. They got tested. They were, were all negative. I'm like, okay, now don't go anywhere and come on over. Right. And then they came dude, over. You're like, the, <laughs> you're like the NBA. You created a <laughs> bubble just to hang out with you. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, dude. Of course. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's called being wise. That's being smart. That's no, it. I, I agree. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to accidentally kill anyone. So uh so I'm glad you had fun at your wedding. I hope you don't get ill and I hope you don't kill an elderly person because someone wanted to get married. You know? I'm not hanging out with elderly people. I haven't hugged my parents since March, okay? I know. I'm being careful. Again, it sucks. It's a it's a difficult time. It's a, it's awkward. And so the guy who came over, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you after I'll, I'll, my story involves something that happened, uh, in the, over the weekend. And I, I want to get to the news first. And then I want to tell you something that my, uh, my friend, I should say they're both my friends, the husband and wife. They're both my friends. They're both very, very cool people, but he's a doctor. Like I told you, he told me something about me that I didn't know until this weekend okay i'm 35 years old i didn't know this for 35 years and i'll tell you what that is and it blew my mind and potentially something else i will tell you exactly what i'm talking about that's that's is it that you have a below average penis (laughs) 
Is that what he said? <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. He's never commented on my penis before. <laughs> And it definitely didn't no take clue. me, look, it didn't take me 35 years to realize that. So okay. I've, Good. yeah, I've gone, I've gotten accustomed to that. I'm quite Listen, fine. I'm kidding. I'm sure your penis is just fine. Let's go. Let's move on. Let's get, <laughs> let's get to the news that matters. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going first, man. News that matters. Number one, the news that matters today is that Waldorf Astoria, the famous Hotel in New York City is going to be auctioning off what they're saying 80,000 items, dude. 80,000 items are going up for sale. The hotel, I think, was built in 1931, so it's oh, quite old. Things in there are one of a kind. They're custom pieces. They're made in France and blah, 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 blah. Dude, I would never buy a used hotel anything. Anything. No. No. No, stealing the shampoo is where I draw the line. Yes. I would not take anything from a hotel other than that. Completely or a towel. Agree. I have got away with a towel, but You've that's s- about it. Really? What'd you use the towel for? Just did you need well, some towel? Just take them. Yeah, I don't know. And now you got them for like, you know, the the towel in your bathroom that you use to mop up the floor. Yes, like that. Yeah, for that. Got it. Okay, no, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's not bad. However, everything else in the hotel room, like, dude, the hotel's been there since 1931. Everything in that hotel room has had some balls rubbed on it. There's not a do- there's not a doubt in my mind that some dude's nutsack wasn't on that lamp, that nightstand, that chandelier. That was you know what I mean. There's no way that that sure. that is not just littered with semen. <laughs> Every black light, it's just gonna glow. Dude, the whole yes. freaking room. Like Winston Churchill's dong has been all over. <laughs> That phone over there. There's not a doubt in my mind. He got off the For phone sure. with the president and then rubbed his dick all over the receiver. <laughs> I know it. Eisenhower is having orgies in there. The whole <laughs> Eisenhower. You know it. <laughs> oh, dude, it's going to be a hell of an auction. Yeah, dude. There's the no way. The dude's going to get like... Like, how are you going to go, hey, blah, 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 35 blah, 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 for 80,000 items? Dude's going to pass out. The guy. <laughs> Assuming they're doing it, you know, auction style from the 40s. <laughs> if they're still doing that. Dude, yeah, every auction. Have you ever been to an auction? Yeah, one time. What there was wasn't 80,000 like? items, though. And oh. It was a bunch of shit. It was like a shed. <laughs> you might as well have thrown it all away. <laughs> the dude's up there like, do I have five dollars for this old, you know, rusty barrel that we found? <laughs> and everyone's like, "No, you don't. No, nobody's gonna give you five dollars for that." Dude, I've never been to an auction where something didn't sell, where the guy was just like humming and humming and humming and humming up for like fifteen minutes and then nothing. We're gonna have a you starting go, bid going it. down. Yeah. Value. <laughs> Somebody just take it out of here, please. Somebody get rid of it. <laughs> uh. That would be the way, yeah, if I tried auctioning off some of my stuff, it would be, everyone would be like, no, no. And at the yeah, end, yeah. You, you get down to one cent and nobody still wants it. It's just a conveyor belt, like a Quiznos, <laughs> like the Quiznos belt into a, into a fire, into just a fire pit, <laughs> you know? Oh, that's Anybody sad. want my diploma? My diploma, diploma going once, <laughs> diploma going twice, diploma five dollars. Do I hear five dollars for my diploma? No, <laughs> no. Where, where'd you graduate? <laughs> University of Akron? Fuck. No. <laughs> to, to throw that. Uh, throw that. Is, is that like an online only school? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Which is fine. No, it's not online only. No, dude. Okay. I went there. What are you talking about? That's uh be- let me I just say, you. come on, dude. That's LeBron James. Uh he didn't go to college there. He he is okay. How dare you? Okay, he's a zip. He got an honorary degree from the University of Akron. <laughs> so, why? He's an alum. He's got an honorary degree. Okay. So, I'll give it to you. Get fucked, Pike, because me and <laughs> LeBron James. Same alma mater. Same alma mater, baby. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, here is some news that matters. You mentioned Quiznos, which uh, I've never had Quiznos, but I've eaten Subway more times than anyone probably and it was just determined this is in ireland they determined a, a court like the supreme court ruled that subway bread is not allowed legally to be considered bread actually 
because there is so much sugar in this bread that it does not qualify as bread. <laughs> it's just shit. It's this bread. So essentially, <laughs> it's like it's, a wheat popsicle. <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's more of a donut or like a cake. Oh my is. god. No way. Oh, yeah. Subway, man, all these years they had us fooled that it was healthy, and it's it's just shit. It's sugar bread. And while they're at it, they, they might want to look into the chicken because there's no way that actually can be called chicken. Either. Yeah, dude. The quality dude. of Subway has gone down mm-hmm. like like the, the, the grade of Subway is lower than what Jared <laughs> likes in children. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, hey guys, yeah. what grade is this? Oh, we need to lower this grade because trust me, I'm a big fan of the lower grades. If you know what I mean? Everyone's like, what? No, I don't know what you mean, Jared. From so bad, no idea. You went a long way for that one, but I, I thank I you. Respect it. Thank that you. Was good. Thank you very much. I appreciate. It. Totally get it. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, they man. used to be pretty good. Subway used to be pretty good. Uh. I didn't mind Subway for a long time, and then all of a sudden the chicken started tasting like, like um, like rubbery. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's like it's like a powder mix that they just let get solid. It's gross. <laughs> it's so bad. The chicken breast, it's a joke. Yeah, you're essentially saying the the chicken at Subway is like those f- sponge dinosaur pills that you throw in the bathtub. Yes, that is them. actually a really good analogy because it's honestly like that. It's spongy. It's yeah. not chickeny. I don't like it at all. They used to mm-hmm. cut the bread. They used to like hollow out the center and then take the top off and then put all the stuff in there and then lay it back down. And then once they started cutting the sandwiches like sideways... You're like, this is this whole thing's gone to shit. The hell out of here. Yeah. You know, this is all bad. Actually, you know what? Can I give a can I give a shout out to uh something I miss from living up there in Fargo, North Dakota? Yeah. In Minnesota. I miss herbs and gerbs. Herberts and gerberts. Oh, dude. Yes. Holy it misses you too. Fire. Fire. It's so good. The best. And they got soup. The oh. soup is so good. Oh, dude. Dude. I had Herberts and Ger- I had Herberts and Gerberts twice last week. Oh man, you what? what you living it Seriously. up, dude? Yeah, man. Well, I don't know if that's living it up. That's just like eating like shit. That's no, what that is no. But. You're living it up. So if you've never been to Herberts or Gerberts, real quick, it's a sandwich place. It's a lot like Pot Belly if you've ever had Pot Belly, but they take out the middle of the bread and they call it the guts. And they give that to you on the side. And then when you order like a soup, it's like perfect soup dipping mechanism. Oh, God. Every oh, time. Dude. Oh, and it's so good, man. So I would put Herberts and Gerberts as one of the one of the more prime sandwich shops. I mean, it's what do you got sandwich wise? What's your best sandwich shop? I think it's not like a I local. I'm talking about chain wise. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jimmy John's and Herberts and Gerberts are for me right there. Jimmy I might John. take Herberts and Gerberts just because of the soup factor. Got to go Herberts and Gerberts. Dude, I just had Jimmy John's not that long ago. It was trash. Really? Like went downhill trash. Like trash. Like gave me diarrhea trash. Oh, God. Yeah. What are you getting? That you, what? I, I, I just ate like a, it was like a normal sandwich. It was like I got a roast beef or something. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, I don't know. I have no idea. I feel like you just get a lot of diarrhea. Like, <laughs> this might be a separate issue. Is that what the doctor discovered about you? That you have like irritable bowel syndrome? <laughs> no, that's not what the doctor know. You know what though? Maybe I do. Maybe this is like yeah, your lead. You're like, okay, I, you get tested for COVID. I'll get tested for IBS. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I would feel a lot better. I, I maybe I'm exaggerating, but I, I saw every show at one point. You're like, ah, and I got diarrhea. <laughs> I have a very sensitive is- sub stomach, apparently. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. Oh, so number one, Urban Zagurbitz. Number two, Jimmy John's. Number three. Dude, yeah, the Potbelly is so good. I didn't Pot know that belly. was national because we got one here. Yeah, Potbelly's is a national chain. It, it's a whole thing. Okay, yeah. give me Potbelly then. Okay, Potbelly. So you're putting Jimmy John above Potbelly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Just because no, like, it's a, I feel like I have a better relationship. Okay, all right. I'm, dude, I'm How about getting, you? Dude, okay. First of all, I'm going Herberts and Gerberts, number one. Nice. Hands down. Number two, I'm going Pop Pelly, fire. Uh, number three, I got to go with, like, uh, 
I, I don't do they have them there? It's uh Jersey Mike's. I like a Jersey yeah. Mike. Yeah, we got one. I'm liking Jersey Mike's. Too. Yeah, Firehouse Subs. I put at maybe four. Do we have a Jersey Mike's? It's like next. Faro's not that big of a city, but they're like next to each other in this. Te- it's weird. What is Jersey Mike's? A Jersey and- Mike's and a Firehouse. What do you do, man? What do you do, dude? It's brutal. You pass you both go of to them, that- and you go to Herbert's to Gerber's. That's what you do. Yes, I love that place. Love I'm so it. hungry. Uh, let's go to my second story of the news that matters, and this is uh, this is this is a bit of a touchy subject, you know. And I'm not dipping into politics here. I don't want to. I don't want to do that, okay? Because I don't. I, I don't, don't want to waste my time. However, what what's to talk about? There's some. Ru- <laughs> yeah. There's some rumors swirling around. Chris Wallace. He's a Fox News host, and I think he is a bona fide journalist. I think he's he's a he's a Super smart guy, and I really like that fact that he doesn't take shit from anyone. I don't. He doesn't care what political side of the aisle you're on. He, yeah. He'll just. He, he was. He was the moderator, correct? He was the moderator, right? So after yeah, yeah. the moderating, uh, um, the moderating, the moderating of the first debate between Joe Biden and Trump, people on the internet started swirling on this rumor, saying that Chris Wallace is hanging out with Epstein. They're like, look at these photos. Here he is. Hanging out with Epstein. Oh, come on. Yeah, dude. Look, he's tied to the Epstein case. Here he is Jeez. being helped off a boat by old Jeffrey Epstein. You know? Come on. You know who it was? Th- you know who it was in the photo? Who? George Clooney. George it wasn't fucking wasn't Clooney. It was. <laughs> it wasn't Epstein. It's George Clooney. Oh. Uh, how do you I get it was Epstein and Clooney? Jesus Christ. No, it's Chris Wallace. And George Clooney hanging out together. How do you get George Clooney and Jeffrey Epstein confused? Uh, a couple. Good, I feel weird saying Epstein <laughs> is good looking, but like, you know what I mean. They're like they got the the gray fox thing going on. He's a disgusting human. <laughs> you don't have to say. Yeah, we get it. You know, Epstein. Okay. Yeah, trash human being. You're like, yeah, but not a bad looking guy. You know. No. no he- <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, uh, oh. uh, how do you confuse okay. anyone? How do you confuse anyone with George Clooney? Like, really? How do you confuse anyone with dude? I don't know. That dude's been looking the same since the eighties. Yes, unreal. And he's the like one of the most recognizable humans on planet Earth. You can put George Agreed. Clooney anywhere on this spinning blueberry, and everyone would go <laughs> Batman with the nipples. You know, like they know. <laughs> Who he is. Yeah. I'm so glad it was him and not Epstein, though, because I feel like the list of people associated with Epstein is getting longer than the people who aren't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people, I, I can't even think of who at the moment, but there's a ton of ties to him. So I feel like people are Photoshopping photos, too. Yeah. Like, look, who, look here. Look who was in this photo with Epstein. I know. And it's like, it's like Ellen. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's the girl who played. Uh, 11 on Stranger Things. You're like, she wasn't even born yet. <laughs> not even alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, no, but I, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like, yeah, the whole Epstein thing. Do you think Epstein killed himself? Or do you think he was murdered? You know, no, I, I don't think he did. You think he was wait, murdered? Wait, wait, sh- oh, shit. No, 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 no. No. I believe he did. Yes. I believe the conspiracy uh, probably, it's likely not true. Like, I'm not going to rule it out. Yeah, but everything I, I've seen, I, I would believe that he killed himself. Yes. Oh, so do you? Do you think he committed suicide? Yes, oh, I okay. believe he committed suicide. Yes, uh, dude. I if think I, if I had to bet, I'm not like 100. percent I'm not going to argue you to death if you believe he didn't. Yeah. Like I get there are things that are like, come on now. Yeah. But things if I had sketch. to bet on it, it would be that he yes, he actually did. Okay. I'm. Uh, I think do I'm you? in the opposite camp, dude. I hate conspiracy theories. I think they're dumb. I hate people that believe in them. Uh, but, but, but there's always a, but I'm one of those people, but I believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> that said, yeah, that I'm absolutely on this yeah. conspiracy train. Yeah. Yes. I think, uh, no, dude, I don't think he killed himself. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think he wanted to die, but I do think yes. that a lot of people were probably they're like, we can make that happen, you know, yeah. instead of being on suicide um, watch and blah, blah, blah. The whole thing seems really shady. Real sketchy, real put it under, you know, let's wrap this thing up, you know, kind of a thing. So, yeah, 
yeah, I feel like uh, that's with every conspiracy. There's always things that you can kind of like tweak and make look right like evidence to back up your. I don't know. Did you see this thing going around Twitter? It's like a conspiracy pyramid. You know, like there's the food pyramid. <laughs> it's like the levels of being a conspiracy theorist. Okay, no, I'm... and like at the top is like believing the like deep state theory and uh, flat Earth and shit like this. Uh, and I think yeah. Epstein not killing himself was in that same part. It was up in the top of the triangle. Yeah, yeah. It was, oh fuck! Yeah. I'm hanging out with the nut bars. I don't want to hang out with the nut bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And once you believe one, you might as well fucking believe them all. Hey you man, know? Bush did nine eleven. The whole thing. Yeah, dude. We're living on the back of a turtle shell, and <laughs> there's a giant ice wall, and yeah. uh, birds and, uh, aren't real. The way- Wayfair, whatever. Yeah, Wayfair. Uh, they're selling yeah. children or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. All right. Oh, dude. I'm on it. Okay. All right, so here's uh, my second News That Matters story, because, and this, again, this is not political, but if you were to vote based uh, solely on who you believe will actually live through their four-year term, yeah. This, the research says to vote for Biden. They say that despite him being 77 and Trump only being 74, yeah. these these people, these doctors were able to estimate who has the best chance of living. Biden has a 95% chance of surviving four years from now. <laughs> this is the saddest statistic of all time. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to survive Trump, for four years? Yeah. <laughs> Trump's only at 90%. Oh, wow. Which it's is just, still, they still, they they say both are likely to live until they're at least 85, which is incredible. You yeah. Know, for a male in the U.S., that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Is this but pre-COVID Trump? Is this post-COVID Trump? When, when was uh, this, this was, done? This was, this was today. So I think this is considering, and I watched a press conference today that he's all good. Like he, he made it through it. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's out of the woods yet. In all honesty. Yeah, they did say that. He's not out of the woods. Yeah, I think COVID is a sneaky motherfucker. That's why you should get tested, Pike. Dude, I'm going tomorrow. Relax. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, no, dude. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Biden's old as shit. There's no doubt. <laughs> you can look at the guy. Dude, we were talking about this, and again, just looking at it in a neutral perspective, this is like literally going to a nursing home and being like, all right, which one of you motherfuckers is the most with it? Yeah. You're going to be our president. Right. We're going to pick one of you, you know? Yep. That's so old. It's crazy. I know. It's hilarious. I think next next debate, they should come out on hover rounds. It would be... <laughs> It'd be awesome. That would be great. They show, since it's an empty, like, moderating hall, they're both parked in, like, the handicapped spots outside. <laughs> <laughs> Just in two cars. It's the only spot taken outside. <laughs> so funny, dude. I don't know, man. I look. I I don't know. Uh, Biden looks like he's melting, like off his skeleton. <laughs> Trump yeah. stands like a centaur. I don't know who who stands like that. Have you seen that guy who know. stands? Yeah, he stands saying- like his ass is out. Like he's like, hmm, like he's yeah. like giving like a. Hmm, like a <laughs> like an Instagram yeah, it's like, pose. It's like his wife. His wife made a pie and he's <laughs> smelling it from the other room. Yeah. Like, He's like about to flo- float away on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fucking, the little like stream of scent is coming into his yeah. nose. He's just, mm. <laughs> Yeah, he's like Pepe Le Pew is who he is. Yeah. yeah. That, that's who we're describing. I don't know, dude. Yeah. I have no idea. I All I know is, I, I just know what I've read. All I, and what I've read and like, this is like Bob Woodward. These are like people that like, are, are, are noted journalists and have integrity and it's like real news. Bob Woodward like broke Watergate and like, you know I mean? These are real human beings, like real trusted on the record. And it's like he, Trump eats cheeseburgers in bed before going to sleep. <laughs> it's like, what do you do? <laughs> and I don't believe, dude, I remember when the doctor came out, he's like, this is the healthiest president I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't believe you at all, bro. No, dude, Obama had the six pack when he took office. Yeah, if Obama, Obama, right. But Obama was also like a, a smoker too. Yeah. He was true. just puffing away in the Oval Office. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I Who knows? I, I don't know who's going to live longer. All I know is that Trump has COVID, and that is, like, the biggest story. Trump has COVID, 
34 days, 30, probably like 31 days now before the election. And it's just like, who wrote this fucking movie? This is the worst thing. Can we just have a healthy, <laughs> the elections are going to be weird. And it's just a strange time, dude. The whole thing is just so weird, dude. I don't know. I'm scratching my head. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Weird as shit. Weird as shit. Just a weird time. Not as weird as something that happened to me over the weekend. I really want to hear about this. This is, Pike, let me tell you, this is crazy. Okay? So, my friend, my friend, my friends, I should say my friends. My friends come over this weekend. <laughs> Uh, it's your friend's wife. You can say that. Yeah. We all have that one. Well, it's it's like, yeah, my friend. wife like, and his wife became friends first. So I met him through oh, the wife. And then so nice. I became friends with her. And then she's like, you should meet my husband. And then I became friends with him. And they're just cool people. So they came over. He's a doctor. Okay. He's like an actual medical doctor. So, of course, COVID-19 worries him. You know, so he got tested she got tested. We both got tested. We created our own little bubble. Everything came back negative. They drove up. They live in Phoenix. They ca- they nice. they come here to the house, and we're just sitting around talking. I was like, Jesus, this is crazy. Somebody's over my house, and we're talking like the world is okay, and it's just kind of a weird thing. Like no one's been to my house since March. No one has. You know what I mean? Like I haven't hung out with friends really at all. It's just sure. been kind of just me and the fam. Then he goes, dude, have you ever heard of an air enema? (laughs) I was like, what are you talking about? An air enema? And he goes, yeah. And I go, hold on a minute. Before you tell me what an air enema is, can I record you? And he said, yes. So I'm about to play you the explanation of what an air enema is from my friend who is an actual MD. He's an actual doctor. This is what an air enema is. Tell me if you can hear this, okay? An air okay. enema. Hold on, it's loading yep. now. This is it going to play? Hold on. Interesting. It stopped playing. Okay, here we go. Let me play this. Okay, we'll tell him. Okay. This is an actual doctor describing <laughs> what he just told us is an air enema. <laughs> so an air enema is a treatment for intussusception, which basically means parts of your intestine get stuck over another part of your intestine. And you have to explain this to kids' parents because it happens to young children. And so you have to explain it to their parents before you're about to do the procedure. And you have to tell them, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tube in your kid's butt. Okay? And then I'm going to tape their butt shut as tight as I possibly can around this tube. And then I'm going to blow up their intestines like a balloon. Okay? And they're going to scream the whole time. And they're going to ask you, the first thing they're going to ask you is they're going to say, can we give him something for the pain? Can we sedate him for the procedure? And you have to tell them, no. We need them to be awake because having them scream keeps the pressure high so that they don't perforate their intestines. And so you have to sit there and tell the parents that you're going to tape their kid's butt shut as tight as you possibly can around a tube while you blow them up like a balloon. And you have to listen to them scream until you see it pop back open. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> And do you do this by mouth? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> what? Okay. So break things down for a second. Okay. He tells me that there are some kids that have intersusception is the name of it. And what happens is you have the, the large intestine or I should say the small intestine that comes in ripples over the large intestine or opposite. I don't know. The large intestine over the small intestine. Right. So you have the intestine like this, and one goes bloop and pops over it. So you have to blow air into their intestine like a balloon until it goes and pops back out. And it's deadly. Like, you could die from this. That feels like that would kill. And I didn't hear his answer. Is he using his mouth? Is he, like, siphoning gas with his mouth? (laughs) He said no, right? Yeah, I know. He said no. But you can't give anything for the pain, so you have to blow up a child like a like a like a balloon, like a party balloon. You know, Jesus. Here's the crazy thing, Pike. 
here's where it gets crazy. I had interception when I was a baby. What? I've had an air enema. <laughs> I was blown up like a party balloon. Some How do you dude, not remember that? I was a child. I was a little, I was an infant. But my, my, my mom always said, oh yeah, no, you got really sick when you were a kid and you had, you were throwing up everywhere. We took you to the doctor and they fixed you. I was like, how do they do it? The surgery? And she's like, no, there's a non-surgical way of doing it. I never asked any of that. Dude, <laughs> my mom never told me that they blew up my ass. They blew up my Dude. ass. I got an air enema when I was a, when I was a kid. And 35 years ago, you got to imagine that was probably just like a Hoover vacuum tube <laughs> up your ass. You know, science what it wasn't what it is now. <laughs> you did, did you had a Dyson in your ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Oh my God. So he told me this. I was like, are you kidding me? Why didn't my mom ever tell me that I got an air enema? When I was like, when I was like, how is that not something that you find out from the I'm people? Picturing her sitting you down, like as if she's going to tell you you were adopted, but it's like, uh, uh, Matthew, <laughs> we have to tell you, your father and I have something to tell you. <laughs> and it's that you had a tube up your ass. Dude. Yeah. We, uh, we didn't know what to do. So the janitor came in, <laughs> shoved the shop vac up your rectum. And there was nothing, <laughs> nothing that worked better than that. And where you're here today, yeah. Thanks to old Mr. McCready, the janitor at Hillcrest Hospital. Yeah, wow. uh, unreal, dude. I was like blown away. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? How did I not know that I have? So needless to say, I have to check for IBS, right? Okay, I have to go to the doctor, yes. see if I have some kind of diarrhea issue. But two, maybe that's a complication of some like malpractice bullshit because I yeah, my air enema went wrong. Right. Well, you, you, know? you were the first one, and they're like, well, let's try this out. <laughs> but <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, you... So I'm the fr- I was the first air enema? Yeah. And they're just like spitballing, like, what can we do? We got to get something up there to blow. <laughs> I know. Of a vacuum in his ass. <laughs> yeah, I look like a Macy's Day parade float walking around. <laughs> Damn it, dude. Unreal. So anyway, I learned something about myself this weekend through casual conversation with a doctor. You get to update the list of things that have been in your ass. <laughs> That's exciting. How many are we at now? How many? How many? Eleven maybe is two. it? Maybe two. two. Okay, two. Maybe an accidental finger when I'm wiping or something. Maybe like a finger. oh, hello, you know. <laughs> Didn't mean to discover myself that much. Apologies. You ever apologize to yourself? <laughs> I'm sorry, body. Uh, Didn't mean that. Every day. Every day. Every day you apologize to your body. Every week. Every weekend, mostly. Yes. Every weekend. Wow. After a open bar wedding. Yes. Oh man. Brutal. I hope you feel good. I hope you're feeling good. Are you feeling all right? I feel great. Yeah, I feel good. I mean, some other, some things that may or may not be like allergy related, but. Oh, for God's no, sake. I'm just kidding. Pike, I'm just don't, don't, you're kidding. Don't Relax. do that to me, dude. I'm, I'm worried no, now. I'm, I'm worried about you. I mean, it's fine. If you need an air enema, I would, I'd be the guy to blow air up there. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> I'd whistle. Thank you. I'd whistle while I worked. All right. So, uh, Pike, we have a little surprise here. This is exciting. Okay. We've gotten a lot of complaints on the show. Not about content. Okay. People love the show's right, content. Good, good. They love. They're like, oh, my God. Wouldn't it be great if Sparks had some air blown up his ass when he was a kid? Yeah. Great. Satisfied you. This episode. Done it. Got it. However, a lot of people are saying, what's with the cold open? What's with the, the lack of production? Uh, we are getting that stuff done. That stuff is all the graphics are being made right now. They're all being worked on, which is exciting. However, Pike, you're in a band. You're a musical man. You play the guitar, right? Yep. Guitar in a very famous band. You might've heard of them. What's the name? Uh, It's called low standards. I was going to make something up, but no, no, it's definitely not a famous band. Uh, unless you're in Fargo Moorhead and even then you still may have not heard of us. But we go by low standards. It's a cover band. We've we've been dicking around for like four or five years now, and we write our own music too. So 
Uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, we play other people's music so we can afford to write our own, basically. That's a solid business plan, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, so let's do this. Pike has sent in, I have not heard this. You just told me right before we jumped on the show. Uh, Correct. That you have sent in something that could be used as, like, intro music. Yeah, well, my band, like, right when I got onto this podcast, they've all been listening, and they love it. But Shout they're out all to just, Low Standards. Course, Thank you. Thank low Standards, yes. They're all like, hey, why don't you guys have some intro music? And we know just the song. <laughs> so, and you know, it's perfect because it's royalty free and we don't have to worry about getting sued. I love it. Unless we get really desperate, we might turn around and sue. <laughs> you sue you sue the other <laughs> Sue ourselves, yes. It's almost like when you accidentally poke yourself in the butthole, wiping. <laughs> Same oh, thing, yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, self. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's uh let's check it out. This is the show opening from Low Standards. Obviously a name that correlates well with this show. This is mm-hmm. are you singing on this or do, do you no, need to set this my, up? No, I play guitar, my brother sings, so he'll be the one. All right. Uh, although we sound the exact same, so picture me singing. Okay. Really? You guys sound the same? I'm picturing you Pretty guys similar. looking the same. Are you guys look at you guys look Everybody at, acts like we're twins. I don't think it's that close, but people are like seriously mistake me for him and vice versa. Yes. Really? Okay. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Take a listen. Dude, now I cut it short because I didn't think we would play the whole thing. I'm like, oh, a dude, I was, li- <laughs> I was listening dude, along. Now, you know how songs go. There's another verse. There's yeah. another chorus. Then we do some sort of breakdown. And then we do the chorus again a couple times and it's over. First of all, I, can I give you my assessment on this? Well, OK, I mean, real quick. Yeah. Were you hearing what I was hearing? Because it sounded like it was t- taking place in an empty bathtub. No, like, I, was, I, it, was there an audio me. issue there? No audio issue. Sounds absolutely perfect. OK. Sounds great. How would me. you know? Because you've never heard it before. <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> to me, it sounded really weird. Like it was a. So it, wait it a minute. A, it wasn't in a giant sterile hall. Is that? It's not it? <laughs> no, not originally. Oh, no. oh I thought Maybe it was better. Al- I don't know. Alone Let's in a gymnasium your... is the name of the song, I thought. <laughs> Let's hear your assessment. Interesting. Then. No, it sounded great. Considered. It, it sounds perfect on my end, honestly. Okay, great. Um, First of all, let me just say, pleasantly surprised. I Really awesome. Secondly, it sounds like a song that would be played. I don't know if you ever watched Scrubs, but at the end of every episode, there's like a panning. Like, what's the moral lesson I learned today? Like, that's the music that would play, like, play while I'm doing a panning montage of the oh, hospital, dude. you know, in, in a Scrubs episode. That's the highest compliment. <laughs> Unless I thought you were going to maybe say, that sounds like it could be off a Blink-182 album. That would have been... It does sound like a Blink-182 song. I was going to say, it sounds like a... I could obviously hear the influence. I know you're a big Blink fan. I could hear the influence. It was actually really, really, really good. Can I just say that? Honestly, I've heard a lot of music. Dude, you've been doing rock radio for how long and you've never played one of our songs? (laughs) 
<laughs> now you're coming to me like, holy shit, this stuff's good. <laughs> we could have been on. We could have been on in Vegas five years ago, <laughs> and not in my sister's basement. Shit. Thanks. Dude, yeah. Too late. Well, we got a bunch of other stuff. You should hear the rest of them. They're all on Apple Music and Spotify and iTunes. Let's and drop a link. We're... Drop a link yeah, in man. the description. Oh, good idea. Dude. Yeah. I'll throw it in there. Of course, man. Make sure you check out. You got you got some uh, social media, I assume. Right? Yeah, we're on Facebook um, and Instagram and Twitter. And you can see our music videos on like YouTube. Uh, we have a few out there. We're just recording a new set of songs uh, next month. So we'll be getting those out here. Our sophomore release like nice. three years later. Just yeah. after... Mike is done getting over COVID. He's going to jump in the studio. He's going to rock with his other friends and family that are also getting over COVID because they all went to the same wedding yesterday. So, (laughs) no, in all honesty, really, really, really surprised. It's really good. You guys are really good. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Like I said, we we put our money that we make from playing these cover shows into recording and everything. So, it's not like it was recorded into a a bathtub like we had said it was actually a professional studio so that wow. was cool wow wow yeah i i'm impressed man hopefully somebody picks it up we'll drop a link if you want to download low standards what's the name of that song keep your silver metal keep your silver metal if you yeah. want to oh. i mean if that's your shit if i feel like if that's the kind of music you like dude you're hitting it you know what i mean like yeah. you're you found that crowd that would love it too bad yeah man they're all on the van's warp tour right now and they're not <laughs> They're not listening to the show, but uh, you know, dude, don't it, even talk about Warp Tour. They canceled Warp Tour. Like, uh, it's over. I feel like you not just like you definitely would have been on Warp Tour. Fuck, I've been going every year. Yes. Yeah, I know. I that's totally you. If you uh, look, if you've ever had a piece of your body pierced by a friend, you'd love that song. If you've ever worked in a hot topic, you'd love that yeah. song. If you own checkered shoes. Then you would absolutely love that song. <laughs> you, yes, 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 yes. If you ever just felt like your parents didn't understand you and decided to dye your hair blue, you would love that song. You're killing it. You know, this is all it's exactly who our audience is. Low standards, right? I know. Thirteen-year-old girls that have some angst at the world, aka Blink One Eight Two fans slash Pike <laughs> Taylor Radio. Uh, I'm just busting your balls, dude. It's really good, and I think we should absolutely use that as a song here on the show. I don't. Are we coming in on that? Are we coming in with it? Yeah, let's just come right in. It's just like, hey, everybody, and it's us, and we do our thing. <laughs> Can we try? We, that, let's give a dry run. That's how I envisioned it. Yeah, go for let's it. Let's give a dry let's run. Get a feel. Get a feel for it. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you go saying ahead. it or am I saying it? No, you're like the main all guy. Right, so all, right, you go all, right, all right. All right. Let me download it here, and then let me play it. All right, here we go. Is it going to start? Hey, guys. Welcome to a new you. Oh, wait, hold on. That wasn't. I started getting, like, inspirational there at the end. You ready? I think you had the right timing, though. Yeah, go for it. It was good. It was good. Are you sick of seeing yourself in the mirror and being sad? Oh, wait, I'm doing it again. It's weight loss. And now I'm doing weight loss. Doing, I was doing yeah. motivational speaker, and now I'm doing weight you loss. You went into, like, Billy Mays mode, I know, too. I know, I know. All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. Can we... I feel like you and I... Can you just lean off? Lean off the camera. Yeah, go out of frame. I'll go out of frame. And when it comes in, we both pop in. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right, you ready? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Are you out of frame? I want to oh, go. Keep going. You're not out of frame yet. Come, gee, I got to get out of my chair now. Get out of your chair, dude. Come on. Are we going to do this for real or what? Do is, it. Is this how we're going to intro the show every time? No. Yes. All right. Hold on. Here we go. You ready? Go for it. Hey, yes. what's up? Welcome. It's the Sparks Show. That over there is Pike. I'm Sparks. What's going on? You know what? It's going to work. That felt really good. That felt really good, dude. If you didn't see it, then you missed out because that was like electrifying. Uh, Just come at, coming right into that chariot when that drum hit. Yeah, yeah, dude. Right then. Right then. 
I think it worked out really good. Uh, dude, Hell no, yeah. seriously, shout out to Low Standards. I know I'm busting balls, but I think it's really good. I actually want to hear the whole song. If you want to hear everything they got, check out the, the description in the in the show notes. Pike is going to link all their stuff, and hopefully you get some. I know we're using it royalty-free, but hopefully you get some some money off the old yeah, Spotify man. and Pandora and all that kind of stuff. Would love it. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, that's it for the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you could, hit the subscribe button. That would help out this show, and it would help out Pike uh, saying, hey, guys, I got some notoriety for low standards. And then it would be really cool of you to do that. If you have a Gmail account, you already got a YouTube account. Just go ahead and click subscribe, youtube.com slash Sparks Radio, and drop a comment below. Let us know what you thought of low standards. Let us know what you thought of me getting an air enema when I was a child. <laughs> and then let me know what you who who's going to live longer, Trump or Biden. Okay, that's what we're just playing. The, it's got a little death pool going on right now. Who's going to die first? That would be an interesting answer uh, to, to see what you think. And then, of course, if you want a free Sparks Radio sticker, hit us up on social media. He's at Pike Taylor Radio. I'm at Sparks Radio. Give me a follow and then DM me your address and I'll mail you one. Dude, I got the Gen 2 stickers. They're downstairs. Ooh. I haven't opened up the package yet, but I got them. So we're going to start Exciting. mailing them. I know, dude. I'm stoked. So that's it for the show. Give us a rating review if you can. I'll stop asking for shit. Okay, see ya. <laughs>